across the edge of the gravel, get online, come across, and we'll come across. Yeah. So what do we do in the military? Think about this real world. You got your entire squad stopped in the middle of an open field. Okay, it's not a discussion. Just tell them what you want done and make it happen. Get online and get them set. Get online! Foster, get online, get them set. Young members in the military tend to be very trying. Stop moving, get in the prone, and get set. It's like herding cats, and cats are independent, cats do what they want. You know, a dog will come when it's called, cat comes when it feels like it. Look at you guys. Hey, spread out! Spread out! Privates and cadets in the military very much the same way until you mold them. You guys are getting separation anxiety. I have heard many times that, you know, a real man doesn't have anything to do with cats. And, uh, you know, I, I have always been taught to march to the beat of my own drum, do my own thing, be my own person. And honestly, I don't feel like I have anything to prove as far as my, my manhood is concerned. I think a real man is someone who can just be comfortable with themselves and whatever it is that makes them happy. So which one are you? I want to drop the uh, poli-sci. My name is Jordan Waller. I work as a Reserve Officer Training Corps ROTC cadre or assistant professor of military science at Eastern Oregon University. I do that five days a week and I ranch on nights and weekends. I spent the majority of my combat tour in Iraq outside the wire uh, escorting troops and equipment. And there was small firefights that would break out, menacing fire. Now I live on a thousand acre cattle ranch with my wife Amanda, my son Michael, and my daughter Rietta. And uh, our cat, Izzy. Izzy is, is very independent and uh, is very loving and intelligent. So if Izzy had a rank in the military, I would say she's a command sergeant major. She runs the show, and she's, she's got that intimidating look, that, that commands presence, if you will. She's just allowed to do kind of whatever she wants and come and go as she pleases. On a ranch, you know, the cats have a lot more freedom. You know, they, they come in and out at their leisure. They're free to roam. Izzy loves the barn because it's a giant jungle gym. She has the freedom to do whatever she wants. And because there's not much traffic down there, nobody bothers her. That's the cat lounge, if you will. I didn't choose Izzy, Izzy chose us, I guess, is, is the way I would put it. I went to the animal shelter, and all of a sudden this, this cat jumps right up on my shoulder and just starts rubbing on my ear and purring, and it was Izzy. From that moment, I had kind of a special bond with our cat. My wife, Amanda's been involved in the performance horse world her entire life, but uh, just the last two years has she gotten to the level where she can compete professionally. I first found out Jordan was a cat guy because my mother has three questions that she asked any man that I dated. Do you love Jesus? 
do you love your mother and do you like cats? <laughs> so you have to love all three of those <laughs> to be in my family. I think that the cats just end up becoming part of the family in a way. You care for them, you provide them food, water, or anything that you would end up providing the kids. Go set up your stirrups, sis. You, you better hang on. <laughs> this horse is sensitive. You can just use your, your legs, honey. So what you're doing good. I'm Sammy, glad our children are surrounded by animals because it gives them not only something to do, but something to stay out of trouble by, having to take care of the animals. You can't fence in a cat. They come in and out of the house. Cats are headstrong. Maybe that's why he likes me, because I'm just as headstrong as the cats are. <laughs>So when I was in Iraq, our truck was hit a couple of times with IEDs. Oh! ID. Nobody was killed, but there were some people hurt pretty bad. The biggest problem I ran into coming back, I would lose my mind. I mean, just absolutely angry and, and I, I still wasn't out of military mode. And uh, it took me, quite honestly, almost losing my marriage to kind of realize that, hey, I better do something about this. So I took those steps on my own and, you know, spoke to a counselor for an extended period of time. Being able to express and explain my feelings or thoughts on any given situation from, you know, Mikey not cleaning his room when he's asked to, you know, those little things could, could set me off and, and I didn't understand it completely. Hey, Mikey, man. You know this, this pen is cleaner than your room, right? Yeah. I'm proud of my husband because he's worked hard in his military career and he's done well by us through that. Shut the gate. As far as the transition back in, you know, a lot of people use service animals, that kind of thing. I'm, I'm pretty lucky. Having Izzy here was very calming for me. In those times where I really was, was over the top, you know, with anger, that goofy cat would jump in my lap and purr and fall asleep, and pretty quick I could just kind of feel the, the raw emotion leaving me. and in turn, actually think more clearly. And then, of course, it was the, the long walk down the hallway to apologize to Amanda for being a jerk. I don't know that even to this day, Amanda realizes how integral a part of me adapting back to civilian life 
that Izzy really was. And uh, I think if she knew, she'd probably thank her. <laughs> maybe, maybe give her a treat now and again. I guess it's probably fair to say Izzy is part of the family now. Hey, cows. Yeah, yeah. Hey. And I think it's a pretty great life. <laughs> Come on, big boy.